Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa abdullu salati wa tammu taslim. Ala sayyidina wa maulana wa habibina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على ساداتنا آدم ونوح وإبراهيم وموسى وعيسى جزاك الله خيرا وعيسى بن سادات سيدتنا مريم ومن بينهم من النبيين والمرسلين صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم أجمعين اللهم إن نعوذ بك أن نظن مضل أو نذل أو نذل أو نزل أو نزل أو نظلم أو نظلم أو نجهل أو يجهل علينا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا وادبا وحلما متقبلا يا رب العالمين we begin seeking the blessing and the help of the name of Allah the all encompassing name of God which gathers the meanings of all of his names those names that he has taught his creatures and those names that he has stored uh, reserve their knowledge for himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask always that Allah send blessings and peace upon our leader Muhammad, our beloved leader Muhammad and upon his family and his companions and upon our leaders from the prophets among them, Adam and Noah and Abraham and Moses and Jesus, the son of our master Mary, and all the prophets and messengers. May Allah bless them all and grant them peace with their families. Inshallah, I encourage everyone who's here for the talk to come this way so that I don't feel like I'm at a, ticket, a tennis match. Inshallah. We're here just to have some reflections, share some reflections on uh, this blessed day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, the sacred month of Muharram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it you know, mentions in the Quran, "Badaudu bilay min al-shaitan al-rajim." Inna idda al-shuhuri inda Allah ithna ashara shahra fi kitab Allah. That the months, the number of months with Allah, are twelve months. They are mentioned in the Kitab of Allah. The scholars of Tafsir, the scholars of Quranic commentary, say that Kitab Allah here refers to Allah al-Mahfuz to the guarded tablet. So this is something, this is a reality regarding time that is written on the guarded tablet. Aloh al mahfuz that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. As Allah Ta'ala says, Yamhu ma yasha wa yuthbit wa indahu umul kitab. He erases whatever he wills from the book, from the tablet and he affirms whatever he wills, and with him is the mother of the book. And so on the lawh al-mahfuz, on which Allah Ta'ala commanded al-qalam, the pen, to write everything that will be till the end of created time and space, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has written that there are 12 months. And this is something that is part of our deen. Our deen, it encompasses space and time. And we as human beings, we find ourselves within time and space. But every space and every time is not the same. Allah Ta'ala says, يَوْمَ خَلَّقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ From those 12 months, four are what? Sacred. There are four sacred months. What are they? The sacred months are, the first of them is what? Muharram, the month we're in now. And then after Muharram is what? What's after Muharram? No, no, sacred months. Rajab. What's after Muharram? Rajab, which is the seventh month. The seventh month. And then after Rajab, we have Dhul Qada, the eleventh month. And then Dhul Hijjah, the twelfth month. So those are the four sacred months. Month number one, 7, 11, and 12 on the Islamic calendar. So they're not all consecutive the way we would imagine. The ones that come in a consecutive order are Dhul Qa'ada, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. Right? And Rajab is alone by itself. Okay. These are sacred months. 
And one of the tragedies of the modern age is the teaching that nothing is sacred anymore. The teaching of Islam, on the other hand, is that there is sacred time. As we just mentioned, as we, this ayah from the Quran, there are times that are sacred. Dhul Hijjah, the month of pilgrimage, is what? Sacred. Mm. Every Jumu'ah, sacred. The time of Sahar before Fajr is what? Sacred. The time of Fajr to the sunrise, sacred. Between Asr and Maghrib, sacred. There are sacred times and there are sacred objects like Bayt al Haram, like Al Kaaba, like Makkah and Medina, sacred. And there are sacred people. The greatest among the sacred people are who? The prophets and the messengers. And the greatest of them is who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so this leveling that's happened in the modern age, Islam cures that to let us know that there are special times, special people, special places. And if you honor, if you and I honor those sacred times, if we honor the sacred places that Allah has given us, Preeminent among them, of course, of course, is Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem, Al-Quds. Right? If we honor the sacred people that Allah has sent us, al nabiyin wa siddiqeen wa shuhada wa salihin the prophets, the truthful ones who only speak the truth and only affirm that which is true, the witnesses, and among them are the martyrs, and the righteous, if we honor them, inshallah, we'll become sacred. We will, that, that will begin the process of our own sanctification for those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a path to sanctity. Hmm. Because the invitation of Islam is not just about salvation. It's not just about getting to Jannah, right? That's part of the message. How do you get to paradise? But another deeper aspect of this prophetic message, this risala, is how do you become sanctified in this, land, in this world? In a sense, beyond getting to heaven, beyond getting to Jannah, how do you bring Jannah here? How do you realize Jannah in your heart? As some of our scholars used to say, paradise is in my heart. It doesn't matter what you do to me, there I have Jannah in my heart. Or like Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, used to say, the companions of Rasulullah they were a people whose hearts were in paradise while their feet were on earth. So this day of Ashura, it's a sacred time. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to fast this month. He used to fast part of this month, but especially he used to fast the 10th of Muharram. All of the sacred months are times of fasting. Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram and Rajab. There are times outside of the obligatory fast of Ramadan when it is mustahab. It's recommended to fast as much as you can. Not the whole month, not the entire month, so that you don't make it like Ramadan, but part of the month. At least, at the very minimum, three days from the month. And if you fast three days from each of the sacred months, you get the reward of fasting the entire month. And so we fast, some of us, maybe all of us that are present here, we fasted today. Why did we fast today? 
hopefully we fasted with some understanding mm. of the meaning, the significance of this time. The hadith, the narrations that we have from the Prophet ﷺ mention on the authority of our mother, Lady Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, that the Quraysh used to fast Ashura in, before, in the time before the Quran was revealed. It was called Asr al-Jahiliya, the time of lawlessness. I know Jahiliya is often translated as what? Ignorance, right? But Jahiliya is more than a time of ignorance. It is a time when there were no laws that were uh, no codes of, of, of ethics that the majority of the Quraysh honored, right? There were times when people were burying their daughters and where people were fighting and killing one another over horse races and things like this. And in the sacred months, they would stop fighting. Why? Because these were the months when the pilgrims would come. So the Quraysh would fast the month, would fast the day of Ashura, even in the time when the Prophet ﷺ was in Mecca, and Rasulullah himself used to fast it. And it was not until Allah Ta'ala gave the Muslims the month of Ramadan, after the hijrah, after the migration, that fasting Ashura now became optional. It became voluntary. Ramadan became the fast that was fard, that was an obligation. And now fasting Ashura became nafil, and a supererogatory or a voluntary fast, which the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba mentioned, and you know, because of time, uh, we're not going to read all of the narrations. We'll just present them in summary. The Sahaba said after Ramadan, after the month of Ramadan, that there was no time that was better to fast than the month of Muharram, the month that we're in now. And the Messenge of Allah was keen on fasting the day of Ashura to the point where even when they were traveling, even in Safar, the Sahaba, the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, would fast Ashura. That's how important it was. Even though in Ramadan, if they were traveling, many of them would, would break their fast in Ramadan, but not Ashura. That's how important Ashura was. When Rasulullah came to Medina, he found the Jews and some of the Christians honoring them. they would honor this day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram. And he asked, he asked them, why are you honoring this day? And they said that this was the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberated Moses, Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and he liberated the children of Israel, the, the, Isra the Israelites. And Moses used to fast this day. And he fasted it out of thanks, out of gratitude to Allah Ta'ala. Is this just history for us? No. The Prophet Sallallahu said, in that case, he said, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ نَحْنُ أَحَقٌ بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ We have more right to Moses than you. And so the Prophet Sallallahu he reaffirmed the fasting on, of Ashura. He fasted it. And then some of the companions, they mentioned, well, you know, the Jews and the Christians honor this day. So maybe, you know, we should do something to distinguish ourselves. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, made the intention to fast the ninth, the next year, the ninth of Ashura and the tenth, to distinguish himself from the Jews. Why? In the early days of Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu he liked to adopt the practices of the people of the book, like the Christians and the Jews, as opposed to the practices of 
the idolaters. But after the migration, after the hijrah to Medina, the Prophet said, now forming a new identity for the Muslims, now he began to distinguish himself. And so those of you who are fasting, inshallah ta'ala, let your fast be on the 9th and the 10th, or as some of our scholars say, on the 10th and the 11th. And let your fasting of these days be like our fasting in Ramadan. Fasting is not just leaving food and leaving drink and intimacy, but it is leaving all kinds of disobedience to Allah Ta'ala. It is leaving the social media accounts and wondering who's following me and who likes this and Instagram and Snapchat and all of the distractions. The days that we fast should be a time where we reflect on the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in liberating the Israelites and giving victory to Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, not by conquering Egypt as many Muslims today think that's what victory looks like yes or yes <laughs> what was their victory it was the exodus it was their leaving a, an environment where it was not possible for them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the victory. Just as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left Mecca al mukarrama and migrated to Medina Munawwara, just as the Sahaba before that left Mecca al mukarrama and made not one but two migrations to Ethiopia, where they were protected by Al-Najashi, radiallahu anhu, may Allah ta'ala be pleased with him. Ashama bin Ibn Abjar, the great king of the African empire of Ethiopia. And why do we make hijrah? Why is hijrah a part of our deen? And as we begin this, you know, this, this calendar year, this new hijri calendar year in this month of Muharram, it is a reminder of the renewal of our commitment to Allah Ta'ala. The hijrah actually was not made in Muharram. But our calendar begins in Muharram and our calendar marks the, again the beginning of the hijrah of the Prophet So like that is the date that Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab and Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, Allah be pleased with him, that's the date of all the other times they could have chosen for our calendar to begin. When did they choose? The hijrah, the migration. Some of the, they looked at maybe the, the birth of the Prophet ﷺ being the beginning of our calendar. Some looked at his death being the beginning of our calendar. But they chose the hijrah. Why? Because that was the beginning of the establishment of an independent, free community of Muslims. So dear brothers and sisters, as we conclude, we have about five minutes left. I want to say a few words about the legacy of the Prophet ﷺ. So, yes, we should honor Ashura, and if you fasted today, inshallah ta'ala, or tomorrow, you, inshallah, will have forgiveness for the minor sins of, the, of last year, according to the authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. There are two kinds of sins, and I'll end on this, these two points. I'll talk about forgiveness of Allah, because this is a day of seeking Allah's forgiveness. And in these last moments, ask Allah for his forgiveness. There is no sin, no wrong that Allah cannot forgive, that Allah will not forgive if you come to him with humility, with a heart that is humble and reverent and repentant. So dear brothers and sisters, this, this day of Ashura, it's a cause for forgiveness of the sins of the previous year, meaning the minor sins. Allah Ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an that as long as we stay away from the major sins, Allah forgives what? Al-Lamam, al-Sagha'ir, the minor sins. What are the major sins? Any sin, the scholars like Imam al-Qurtubi and others, 
the great Imam of Tafsir and, and Fiqh, he says, any sin that Allah warns of a punishment of hellfire, or that the Prophet ﷺ warns of, or any sin, any wrong action that there's a had punishment attached to it. So slander, right, murder, stealing, consuming intoxicants, lying, disrespecting parents, leaving a prayer intentionally, right? All of these are examples of major sins. Those sins are only forgiven by tawbah, repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the hearts turning back to Allah. The last thing I wanted to mention in the short time that we have is that this day of Ashura is also known in our history as the day that the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Imam al Hussein Ibn Ali Ibn Abi Talib, may Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him and his father, he stood up against the Pharaoh of his time. Just as Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gave Prophet Musa salam and the Israelites victory over Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt, in the time of Prophet Moses, peace and blessings be upon him, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala raised up from this Ummah, from the family of the Prophet salam, a just Imam, a leader, Imam Adil, to stand up against the Pharaoh of his time, just 60 so years after the Hijrah of the Prophet Wasallam. The story is a story that we should familiarize ourselves with without getting into politics and without getting into sectarianism and without leaving the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and our, by letting our emotions overcome us. But Imam al Hussein, he saw that Yazid who was the son of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and the son of Abu Sufyan who was the grandson of Abu Sufyan Muawiyah, Sayyiduna Muawiyah and Sayyiduna Abu Sufyan were companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But Yazid, the son of Muawiyah had left following the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu in his outward actions. He was known and he is known in history as someone who committed major sins without any shame. And he demanded that all of the religious leaders, all of the emirs in the time of that were present and contemporary with him, give him the Pledge of Allegiance, the Bay'ah. And Imam al Hussein said, someone like me cannot give Bay'ah to someone like him. You see, Imam Hussein, his Bay'ah, his allegiance was not for sale. And he was not a person that was motivated by greed for this world or by fear of creation. And he knew that he had a responsibility as a Muslim, as a scholar, as Sibt Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as a descendant of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to show us how one way that we must deal with tyrant, tyrants and with tyranny. And so he made his own hijrah. <laughs> he made his own exodus. Radiallahu anhu. He refused to give Yazid his pledge of allegiance. He refused to give allegiance to a tyrant. Someone who was oppressing others. Someone who was unjust, an unjust ruler. Even though 
that ruler was the leader of the Muslim community. And he left Medina and he left Mecca, even though he was, people were begging him to stay. Because he did not want bloodshed in the Harame. Until he reached Karbala, that's in modern day Iraq, where he and all of the male members, and we'll stop here inshallah ta'ala so the adhan can be called, where he and all of the male members of his family were martyred, were slain in the cause of Allah, except for his son, Imam Zain al Abidin Ali ibn al Hussein, and the women were spared, and the servants were spared. And so, brothers and sisters, we, we end with this, inshallah ta'ala, the example of Imam al Hussein who chose to be an example of rectification of the ummah of his grandfather. He said, I go out against Yazid to rectify the community of my grandfather. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him. And may Allah reward him and may Allah Ta'ala grant us success to emulate Prophet Moses. Peace and blessings be upon him. To emulate Imam al Hussein and the other prophets and the messengers. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah Ta'ala accept our fasting. I want to remind you before you break your fast, make dua because prayer is accepted right before the food reaches your lips. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah.